Hey guys, so today we're going to discuss um, penis pumping and basically everything that's involved with it from a literature point of view. And so this is honestly, in my opinion, one of the most misunderstood components of PE and that I think that historically a lot of the vets have like said that, oh no, it's just temporary gains. I also think that not too many people actually fully understand. And so for those of you that might have read my post, this is based on a post from Reddit, which I'll insert a screenshot of that post here. But we're going to break down the literature behind it. And most of the information is going to come from this page. Paper. It was actually republished in the journal Nature, but it's from the International Journal of uh, like Sexual Well-Being. But it's a very well-organized paper detailing the entire history of penis pumping all the way to the to current days. We're going to discuss it today. And so, first of all, you have to understand on a fundamental level how pumping works. And so, what happens is you are using an actual pump to create a vacuum. And the vacuum is going to create a negative pressure, and that negative pressure is actually going to draw in. In this case blood into the penis to expand the corpora. And so I'm going to insert a little picture that of a, a YouTube video that shows that when you actually put a balloon into a vacuum chamber and then you actually remove the pressure, create a negative pressure in there, you will actually see the balloon start to inflate when you create that pressure. And the same exact thing is happening with your penis. This is not just drawing in additional edema. I mean, it can absolutely do that. But when you put your penis inside a pump, you are actually drawing in arterial blood into the chambers of your penis and actually causing the, dis the distension that way. That is a key component that you are drawing in arterial blood, creating a essentially a super physiological erection, if you will. The next thing they talk about is actually what are the different types of, of actual devices, if you will. And so there's a vacuum constriction device. This is where you basically put on the penis pump, pump until you actually develop an erection, and then put a constriction device around the base, meaning a cock ring, basically. This is mostly used for people with neurologic issues or bad erectile dysfunction that can't achieve an erection in another way and don't want to undergo surgery. Then in general, there's just a vacuum erectile device. And this is a device that creates a negative pressure, draws blood into the penis without the constriction device. And it's not used necessarily for sexual performance but it's used for things like penile rehabilitation, which I'll talk about in depth soon. And so by drawing that healthy blood into the penis, you can actually um, help in, uh, with injury recovery and overall penis health, do things like prevent penile shrinking, maximize penile growth and penile length after especially an injury, which is what they're talking about in this paper here. And so one thing that we need to, to kind of settle is, you know, what is the recommended pressure used? Well, in this paper, they recommend between 100 and 250 milligrams of mercury, which translates to about four to nine inches of mercury. And so even though it's not very well demarcated in our sub, we recommend pumping between, you know, five to seven. It says HG. It really should say five to seven inches of mercury or INHG. But that is actually consistent with the same range of pumping that is typically recommended on getting bigger. Our website put together by our fearless leader BD did a great job with his pumping guide. And so you can see that demonstrated here and actually this paper, that's what they recommend as well. A key thing to recognize with this paper is that they're saying that between four to nine inches of mercury is actually what's needed to create an erection in most of these men. So this isn't what's necessarily recommended to create a, an additional super physiological erection or pump past the point of a normal erection, but just to actually develop an erection. And you have to be careful because um, when we're talking about using a, especially something like a bath mate, which doesn't have a gauge, their baseline model, their lowest model, um, just like the Bathmate Hydromax, has a max pressure of 10 inches of mercury. And so that's already exceeding, you know, what is recommended at least in this guide and in this paper. And so as far as timing, what they discuss in the paper is that um, the pumping times range from between 30 seconds to seven minutes. A key thing here is the time needed to achieve a sufficient erection for basically for penile penetration. And so this whole paper is not necessarily in the context of PE, so you have to keep that in mind, but it's laying the groundwork, the foundation from where do we have an actual literature base to pull this information from. And so between 30 seconds to seven minutes is what they recommend in this paper. Most guides that I've seen recommend between basically three to 10 minutes uh, of pumping pressure, um, and I'll discuss that later, but three to seven minutes, or 30 seconds to seven minutes is what they discuss in this paper. Now we need to talk about physiology. So what does that mean? And so a key thing is that in this study, which I'll put up here, they show that when you are using the negative pressure, it is actually, once again, drawing in arterial 
blood into the cavernosa chambers, okay? And so that has been proven to be the case. Now, in some studies, they show that there's a mix between the arterial and venous blood, but you're still primarily using arterial blood to create this erection. And so once again, this is that high flow priapism, which I talked about in my last uh, megalophallus paper. In general, this is a much healthier approach to PE because you're increasing healthy blood supply. What is also important to keep in mind is that they have done literature studies and shown that if you use a constriction device like a cock ring for more than 30 minutes, that's when you get ischemia, meaning deoxygenation or basically changes from not enough oxygen or oxygenated blood to the area, which can be damaging. So key point here, if you're gonna wear anything like a cock ring, clamp, anything like that where blood flow is restricted, you need to limit it to less than 30 minutes. So 30 minutes, hard stop. So I, I can't belabor this point enough just because I, I have either read incorrectly or not read in so many other guides that um, this is bringing in arterial blood. And so on a fundamental level, this is not much different from something like clamping where you are using additional pressure, internal pressure to create an, an erection and expand the tissue that way. This is doing the same thing, just using a negative pressure. So the next thing we'll talk about is synergistic activity. So not to be like pompous, but synergistic activity means when you combine it with another agent and they work together to create an even better effect. And so this study showed that when you combine pumping with a PDE5 inhibitor like a Viagra, you actually get a synergistic approach, meaning an improved ability to actually increase blood flow to the penis. So what does this mean? So if you are doing penis pumping and using a drug like Viagra or Cialis PDE5 inhibitor, you can actually train your penis to more efficiently draw in blood into the erectile chambers and actually have improved erection quality as a result. So who should not pump? Well, in general, in this paper, they discuss that people that have problems with organic priapism, meaning you don't have, well, of course, something like sickle cell disease, but even if you just have problems with priapismic prolonged erection in the past, that you should not pump with this. If you have any sort of congestion genital penile anomalies, meaning your, you know, your penis is deformed for some reason, like, I don't know, maybe something like hypospades or something like that, you should not pump. If you have a history of chronic lymphatic issues, um, like really bad lymphangelous sclerosis, um, I wouldn't recommend you pump. You know, you also want to be careful if you have any sort of testicular abnormalities or even something like an inguinal hernia, um, because that pressure that's being applied to the pelvic floor in that area could, in theory, you know, draw in additional blood. So if you have like a a hydrocele uh, or a varicocele in your testicles, you could potentially be at risk of having that worsen. So if you are going to pump, you know, make sure you at least get that evaluated by your urologist and do something like an ultrasound or something like that. So what are the complications from pumping? In general, in this paper, so you gotta keep in mind, this is low dose pumping using medically approved devices. Um, there's very minimal side effects. And so most of the time they show something like some temporary numbness, maybe some very temporary pain or bruising or petechia, the little red spots that I see pop up on Reddit once a week. Oh, this happened when I'm pumped. What does this mean? Just petechia, okay? P-E-T-E-C-H-I-A-E, -E -E. check it out. It's just little tiny, basically ruptures of blood vessels. And so it's not something serious, it'll go away. So very rare complications. They did, however, make note that there are certain case reports that have demonstrated that very um, extreme and rare complications that can occur, like Peyronie's disease, penile skin necrosis, penile gay green, um, for example. But these are very rare and usually in extreme cases where the penile pumping was done incorrectly, not based on the guidelines that they recommended. And I personally have never seen uh, any of those issues in anybody that I've coached um, in my um, in my practice, at least in my um, Patreon practice. I think the main thing you're going to see, and this goes whether you're clamping or pumping, anything that's going to increase that pressure is going to increase your risk of hemosiderin staining, which I have a whole video on discoloration, which you should check out. Um, hopefully we can insert a little screenshot of that video here. But when you have increased pressure, you can actually draw out blood outside of your veins into that or surrounding soft tissue. When that blood gets to positive, it basically turns into something called hemosiderin 
which is basically a dark stain in that area. So it's basically just old blood that causes that bruising-like appearance, okay? Key thing, it is not deoxygenation, whether it be from clamping or whether it be from pumping. The discoloration is not caused by lack of oxygenation unless you're doing it for more than 30 minutes. It's just venous obstruction, okay? One of the most important and interesting things that I have seen uh, in this paper was the benefits of injury recovery. So once again, we're talking about low pressure pumping here, but there is very strong evidence that you can actually recover from many different types of injuries by pumping. The main physiology behind it is that you are actually directly dilating the, the cavernous arteries, bringing in that oxygenated blood, that additional oxygenated blood into the tissues, keeping them expanded, exposing them to that fresh oxygenated blood, and that's how you help with injury recovery. And so this has been seen in things like prostate surgery for prostate cancer, prostate radiation for prostate cancer, for example, and even crush injuries, even neurologic injuries to the spinal cord while people are recovering. By using the pump, you draw in that extra blood, it allows the chambers to expand. And so there's something that's called atrophy. And so like if you're not using your muscles or you have nerve damage, your muscles will literally like wither away. And so the same thing can happen with your penile tissue. If you are not expanding those chambers, exposing the fresh blood, it's like that if you don't use it, you lose it. And so you can actually have what we call apoptosis or programmed cell death that occurs when you are not using that penile tissue, which can cause atrophy or shrinking of the penis, especially after something like an injury. And so in order to prevent that, this paper goes through countless different examples of of using penis pumps after surgery, crush injuries, et cetera, and it allows you to keep that fresh blood in there and prevent that from happening. And so when I'm coaching some of uh, my clients that are suffering, especially when they have you know very small flaccid difficulty actually drawing blood in with an erection, once they've tried other means, I do recommend low pressure pumping in certain cases when it's appropriate because you can get that fresh blood in there, get those chambers dilated and help uh, injury recovering that way. The next thing we'll talk about is never pump with a cock ring in place. And so there's this case report that I'll put up a screenshot here of a man who had permanent erectile dysfunction and fibrosis result from using a vacuum device with a cock ring in place that caused the pressures to reach such a high amount that he caused permanent damage. So please never pump with a cock ring in place, okay? So the next thing we'll talk about is actually improving erection quality, which I kind of previously mentioned, but there are countless studies that show that regular use of a vacuum pump can actually lead to improvements in erectile function. And so this isn't just people who have a, um, like a prostate surgery or, or a pelvic injury. This is just people with high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, people that are at high risk of having problems with erectile dysfunction down the line. And I would even throw in there something like um, people who abuse nicotine with chronic vasoconstriction as a result. And so if you haven't seen my video on nicotine, check that out where I explain all of that. But there are multiple different studies that show that the chronic use of negative pressure vacuum devices can actually improve erection quality. And I already mentioned there was a rat study where they basically severed the cavernosal nerves of the rat penis. And so they severed that so nerves, so the rats won't actually able to get an erection but via typical nerve pathways. And then they somehow found little pumps to pump their little rat dicks and they were able to actually have maintained erection function. It actually had some spontaneous like erections occur in the rats even after their nerves were severed. And so if you think your job sucks, this guy on this paper had to literally pump rat dicks. And so yeah, take that for what it's worth. There's also a study showing that you can have spontaneous return of erectile function when you pump. So I'm not gonna blabor too much. So a question that comes up is, does pumping increase length? Well, in this case, they're looking at primarily men who have had like a surgery or something that can cause some penile shrinkage. However, in this paper that they talk about, they actually show that um, some of the men, and I quote, had successful intercourse with the same or better length and circumference, length and girth, compared with previous natural erections when using an erection a vacuum device. The next thing we'll talk about is actually pumping for women. And so this is kind of off topic, but it is interesting that there is evidence that you can have dramatically improved sexual function, including improved sexual sensation, vaginal lubrication, orgasms, and sexual satisfaction when pumping. And so there was a paper that showed that. And so one of the most important things to talk about here is actually how injuries occur with pumping. And so the most common injury that occurs is because you're using a water pump and the water just dramatically increases your pressure kind of ratio because there's no buffer with the water, which I'll explain later, but that dramatic increase. So you use a bath mate, you put it on, you pump out the water, 
causes immediate pressure increase, and that immediate pressure increase is what actually causes injury. That's the most common thing I see. The other thing is using something like a bath mate, which I don't think the standard bath mate is very good at all, is that when you're put on the pump, so let's say that this is kind of your pelvic floor and let's say this is where your dick comes out and you put on the pump, you are pressing your, your dorsal nerve of the penis, which I put up some pictures here. Your dorsal nerve of the penis comes out right in that area. So you can actually physically put pressure right on that dorsal nerve and right on those nerve roots, which can actually cause nerve damage that way. Pumps like Bathmate don't have a pressure gauge. No idea what kind of pressure you're pumping with. And I also think that when you are pumping, especially for prolonged periods of time, and that base is pressing right on the base of your penis, right on those nerve bundles, right on the suspensory ligament, you can actually damage some of those structures by, you know, by having that occur for too long, by pumping for too long that way. Then of course, things like lymphedema or lymphangiosclerosis that can occur from prolonged negative pressure. In conclusion, um, I think pumping is one of the most underrated and misunderstood exercises, and it kind of drives me crazy um, when I see certain people, even some of these you know, vets um, that just totally bash pumping, say no permanent gains. Fortunately, with people that I've seen like BD or M9, people that I personally trust, um, they, do, they do explain that pumping can help, and, so, and pumping can cause permanent gains. This has been a long video already. I hope this helps. Do your own research, form your own conclusions, check out this paper, uh, leviathansups.com for my supplements if you need any kind of injury coaching my patreon doc hink check me out on getting bigger and i'll catch you guys on the next one